Cost in Amazon AWS Cloud. How to efficiently manage it before it actually burns a hole in your pocket? And how can you save your application even if multiple instances fail? It sounds really complex, right? No, it is not that complex. Well, let me take some questions to make you understand all these concepts and how it is actually done in the real AWS cloud computing. So let's begin the episode 55 with the question number 351. Now the question is asking what does Amazon Elastic Cache provide and your options are in memory caching for the read heavy application. Option B an e cache compatible in memory data store. Then we have option C an online software store that allows customers to launch pre configured software with just a few clicks. And then lastly option D a domain name system in the cloud. And friends most definitely the correct answer is option A an in memory caching for read heavy applications. And a good starting point for Amazon Elastic Cache would be this documentation. Let me summarize this for you. So Amazon Elastic Cache is a fully managed in memory data store and the cache service which allows you to operate and scale the popular open source in memory data stores such as Redis or Memcache and it is designed for the application that requires high throughput low latency data access and can provide sub millisecond response time. So that is the beauty of Amazon Elastic Cache. So with that let's move on to the next question question number 352 that says the company wants to migrate its application to a VPC on AWS. These applications will need to access on premises resources. So that is the condition given here. What combination of actions will enable the company to accomplish these goals? You have to select two correct options. Looking at the options option A it says use the AWS service catalog to identify a list of on premises resources that can be migrated. Option B build a VPN connection between an on premises device and a virtual private gateway in a new VPC. Then we have option C use Amazon Athena to query the data from on premises database servers. Then we have option D connect the company's on premises data center to AWS using AWS Direct Connect. And finally option E leverage Amazon CloudFront to restrict access to static web content provided through companies on premises web servers. So let's look at the correct answers. The first one is option B and the second one is option D. And friends please make sure to watch the previous and the next episodes of this series where we have covered tons and tons of important concepts on Amazon AWS Cloud Computing. And also you can avail all the PDF files with the questions and the answers on multiple exam series and for that consider pressing the join button or email me at connectors at the rate the tech blackboard.com. Now let's quickly jump on to the next question question number 353 that says which methods can be used to identify AWS cost by departments and once again you have to choose two correct options. Looking at the options option A enable multi-factor authentication for the AWS account root user. Option B create a separate accounts for each department. Option C use reserved instances whenever possible. Option D use tags to associate each instance with a particular department. And lastly option E pay bills using purchase orders. Let's look at the correct answers. Firstly we have option B create separate accounts for each department and here my friends please pause the video and try to answer the next correct option that would be option D use tags to associate each instance with a particular department. Now we have taken so many questions on AWS tagging and how does they help how do they really help you in controlling the cost. So all in all my friends AWS tags is a really important concept please read the same and I can also tell you that the similar concept also exists in Microsoft Azure. Moving on with the next question question number 354 that says each department within a company has its own independent AWS account and its own payment method. The new company leadership wants to centralize departmental governance and consolidate payments. How can this be achieved using AWS services or features? Now this one is a related question to the very previous question and the variations like this my friends they really give you a dimension. You are able to understand the concept 360 and that will really open up your mind when you are giving or sitting in a real exam. So let's look at the options 
ऑप्शन ए फॉरवर्ड मंथली इन वॉइसिस फॉर ईच अकाउंट देन क्रिएट आई एम रोल्स टू अलाउ द क्रॉस अकाउंट एक्सेस ऑप्शन बी क्रिएट अ न्यू एडब्ल्यू एस अकाउंट देन कॉन्फिगर द एडब्ल्यू एस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड इन वाइट ऑल एग्जिस्टिंग अकाउंट टू ज्वाइन देन वी हैव ऑप्शन सी कॉन्फिगर एडब्ल्यू एस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन ईच ऑफ द एग्जिस्टिंग अकाउंट एंड देन लिंक ऑल द अकाउंट टूगेदर एंड लास्टली ऑप्शन डी यूज कॉस्ट एक्सप्लोर टू कंबाइन कॉस्ट फ्रॉम ऑल अकाउंट एंड देन रिप्लीकेट आई एम पॉलिसी अक्रॉस ऑल द अकाउंट so i hope you have read all the options and already have identified the correct answer from my side i can tell you this is option b create a new aws account and then configure aws organizations and invite all the existing accounts to join and Now, what exactly is aws organization well aws organizations it allows you to manage multiple accounts centrally enabling the consolidated billing and centralized governance and that was the exact ask in the question as well and this setup it really simplifies the management and provides a single point of control for your organization's aws environment so that is the functionality of aws organizations and we have taken multiple questions on this concept in their previous parts and with that let's move on to the next question question number 355 it says that mr ram is managing an e-commerce web application in aws cloud now the application is hosted on six ec2 instances one day three of the instances crashed but the really good part is that none of his customers were affected what has ram done correctly in this scenario and this question will really make you learn a point or two to understand a good architecture so let's look at the options given here option a he has properly built an elastic system option b he has properly built a fault tolerant system option c he has properly built an encrypted system and lastly option d he has properly built a scalable system now all the options are looking correct very close to each other i mean in the sense they all are looking like a good practice so which one is correct in this scenario well it has to be option b he has built a fault tolerant system and why exactly i have chosen this because here in the question we are talking about the instance being crashing but still none of his customers were affected what does that reflect it reflects that there is a very good fault tolerance in the system or the application so that is why option b is the right choice so in case you are ready to take on the exam series on both microsoft azure and amazon aws then you can surely benefit from our multiple exam series on both of these top cloud providers and not just that we also keep on making videos on free exam vouchers insights into the world of generative ai artificial intelligence and also machine learning and yes do not forget to subscribe to the channel press that bell icon and also do not miss to select that all option so that you are receiving all the timely notifications and that's all for today i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching